since the Central Business <laughs> Architecture Committee meeting, Bob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. Um, before we go into the one presentation, is there anyone here from the public that would like to make a comment? No, okay. So the first item is um, Estes Architecture, review of accessible ramp for 53 Gothic Street, Northampton map ID 31B-235. Um, and with that, we'll have you come make your presentation. Hello, I think most of you know me. I'm Emily Estes uh, Bayesian of Estes Architecture, and I'm representing uh, Peter Whalen of uh, Trajan Properties, LLC. He just purchased 53 Gothic Street. Um, are we going to have any of the plans up or I brought plans? Yeah, the plans would be great. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't have my keys for the. Yeah, this is just for references. Um, this is 53 Gothic Street. Uh, it is a a turn of the century 1900 approximately farmhouse that was converted into commercial space businesses um, probably 20 30 years ago and it's probably not much work been done on the building since then um, peter just acquired it and his goals are to bring the building back up to its former glory so a lot of replacement and maintenance and then use historically appropriate materials and detailing um, this is our plan at the moment. Um, a lot of things are still up in the air till we get uh, a budget established. Um, we did receive our variance from the AAB, so a uh, vertical chair lift is not required, which helps a lot on mm -hmm. budget. Um, <clears throat> the one thing by the central business uh, architecture review is the exterior accessible ramp. Uh, because of the amount of work that we're doing, we do need to bring the building up to be uh, fully accessible. So that will involve um, an exterior, a ramp. Um, we have 24 inches from the uh, sidewalk grade to the first floor, so that requires 24 feet of ramp um, to meet the pitch requirements. And because of the site, there's a lot of constraints um, on the side to maintain the six parking spaces and to not impede on the sewer easement. The front is really the only place that the ramp can go. And because of that, this is pretty much the layout that fits there. Uh, I do think it works nicely in the center. You have an opportunity for some landscaping. And then our goal is just to keep the ramp uh, simple. So it kind of fades in the background, but still with high quality, nice materials. Um, this is a similar ramp that uh, Kiter Builders recently did. Um, we would be adding landscaping, which is not at Roberto's, that's so just done in Photoshop. And then part of the work is to, currently there's a large porch, sorry, this is my phone for not being more, um, full porch in the front that's in disrepair. So the idea is to remove it and that but still build something that's historically appropriate and um, allow for the ramp to come up next to the building. I believe that's about it. So this side is where the parking is? There's a driveway, and then in the back there's parking. Okay, so that's why the ramp's not on this. Yes, and there's also a easement, a sewer easement, a sewer that there. takes okay. up the whole side of the building. And I believe there's just recently been some sewer issues there that had to dig the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. So the reason we want to continue the roof like originally and keep it over the ramp in that area so we can maintain kind of look the front of the building? Um, it was a, a aesthetic, honestly for costs, I would just try to just keep it smaller. Um, I have gone through some historical books and that is appropriate for the age. I'm um, just trying to keep my client's budget in line. Is that going to be a little hip on that or just a It'll be more? a small pitch, but it'll appear flat. So I'm proposing a copper edging, so it'll look like a copper roof, but it'll probably be a rubber membrane roof on there. Are you also um, replacing the siding and the windows? Um, we just got confirmation that the, there's four existing four. layers of siding right now. Wow. So um, How many did you four. Say? 
So that he, there, we know they're original clatters, but it's so compromised that we'll be taking it off and adding probably uh, party board clatters to mm -hmm. similar yes. proportion. A four down to the original, or just the first layer. I think we're going to take everything down to the original sheathing and start over, um, just because it it's aluminum siding, insulation, and two layers of asphalt shingles, and then clouds. Wow. Take it all off. <laughs> yeah. And re window replacing as well. Um, we're we're at yes. For uh, he was probably thinking a two over two. I think there it's. Uh, Are those original windows that you're looking at now? The, or are they just the replacement The already? second floor is uh, have been updated. The first are very old, but all of them don't have the best um, exterior. Oh, I doubt that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just. Detailing. I mean, since that's a six over six, I'm just curious why you don't want to replace it with the same. I don't think they are original to 1900. Um, six over, over six is more of a colonial look. I'm going for a more of a neo gothic. Um, you can see the two over twos. Um, it's a little cleaner look for the occupant as well. Will that have to go through review again then when they do the windows? No, because it's a um, transitional residential structure. Basically, um, the, there's a lot more flexibility with um, modifying those. Um, there aren't the same window detail requirements for, for that, and, or siding, except for I think vinyl is not. not <laughs> I know Mr. Whelan despises vinyl, so it's not. <laughs> and so I go. And so it looks like you're also going to put on new trim as well. Yes, in the front where. Um, I don't have a picture. Peter owns the building next to it on Gothic Street. We're going to replicate a crown detail on the front facade and then this side, primary side facade, and then the rest just be a simple uh, one by four. Mm -hmm. So the, the areas that are most visible to yes. the street would have the crown. But just to play the devil's advocate, a crown detail would not be representative of a farmhouse type. Structure. I would disagree. I found multiple uh, precedents in town. I would probably have a better argument if I had those pictures with me right now. I have them <laughs> so, in my I'm computer. Just to uh, me, when I hear farm or colonial farm, I don't. I think it's simplicity, not or neatness. That's um, why I mentioned it. There's in this actual neighborhood in around um, like day out and things around there. I have them if you want me to pull them up. Oh, okay. So it's, it's so it's we're going to think. Victorian farmhouse actually has a little bit of uh, frosting to it in key areas, um, one being the window crown. And then I would think this, um, which might be better represented, it, it's going to have some detailing in the portico entry that is more on that Victorian farmhouse. Yeah. yeah. This is not under our purview, but what is, is the second floor going to be residential? Just an apartment? No, it's uh, business use as well. So, I, how do you get away with accessibility? We had uh, received a variance from the AAB for not for not making the second floor accessible. Oh, okay. it's only nine hundred square feet. Um, they approved. I, paperwork came through today. It's it's in the registry of deeds as of today. I wasn't ready to do that. It's right. the last resort, but it's uh, it's worth, definitely worth it in certain situations. Yeah, that's based on square footage. It's, it's many, many different yes. things. There are many arguments you can make. And sometimes they require you to go in and make that argument in front of the board. But that's not our purview. So. No, that's okay. I was just curious. Yeah. Um, I think we recognize that you're really struggling with the site and um, and how to make that 24 inches work. It, it's a little bit unfortunate that it's right up against the sidewalk. There's no buffer between it. Um, but I honestly can't see any way that you can pull it back because you're right up against the property line. And, um, and like you said, you have the sewer easement on the other side of the building, so there's really no other, no other option. Not that I can, I'm happy it works in one place. <laughs> 
to you when you first saw the photo, I didn't even notice the ramp. Mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah. it, I, that's not mm -hmm. what caught my eye. Yeah, we'll I, I noticed the, the tree and the landscaping, but the ramp, I didn't. Uh, yeah, well, unfortunately, the, the, the clear, you know, the minimal metal railings, you know, black just tend to disappear, yeah. which is and it is it convenient for someone since it's so close to the sidewalk. Sure. Um, um, and will you have the same metal hand, handrails on the stairs as well? Um, well, it, no, it disappeared. This is a very detailed baluster. But I don't think that that meets it's, accessibility requirements. I don't have it. I mean, uh, to be fully honest, this is a schematic design, and they will wrap around to me uh, and have the correct uh, 23 inch you know, extension. And all the so, where does the ramp enter the building? Where? Right here. So, the ramp, you come up around. And oh, I see. It's a shared front door. It oh, it's a sh oh, it is a shared front door. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. It's behind the, uh, the bushes. Behind the bushes. Okay. Churches uh, and their mechanical equipment. Uh, does anybody uh, have any comments or want to make a motion? I'll make that motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? All right. Any other business? Nope. <laughs> Get a motion okay. to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> 